Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. Listening to Wake Up Hollywood with Nikki Corula and Eddie Pence, right here on LA Talk Radio. up hollywood this is your host with the most nikki carula we are gonna jump right into this wonderful interview we you know i i should preface this with something very sophisticated but we were actually talking about farts farts we were talking about <laughs> fart how we can fart our friends that was uh-huh. the topic right before we hit ready to go and we're ready to rock so <laughs> It's going to be informal. It's going to be, It's we're not We've talking rocket parts. science, but we've broken a huge wind. wall. Yeah, broken wind. We A wind wall. <laughs> a wind wall, exactly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Fletcher, say hello. Hello. Oh, our studio audience loves you already. <laughs> hey, it must be the farts. It's the farts. It's always it's farts. Be the farts. Farts are funny. Well, they, you know what? Some people think they're not funny. I know. I actually have a friend who thinks that farts aren't funny, and it's a big controversy. You know what? It's like, it's like, it's, it's like, if you can't laugh at a fart, mm-hmm. we may not be close. Mm-hmm. That's like a rule. It's I feel like, like also if you become a parent or have old people around you, like on either end of like the age spectrum. But how could you not? I think, I feel like the universe was created and we were made to make farts. Yes. So that we could laugh at ourselves. I mean, animals fart. Yeah. My dog farts. My bulldog farts all the time. All the time. My like, bulldog <laughs> farts. And it's the cutest thing because he like plays it off like, did you do that? Uh-huh. And I'm like, no, you did that. You did that. You because did I good. saw it uh-huh. and I heard it. Our dog, every time she jumps on the bed, she farts. That's amazing. <laughs> so it's like. We got to get our dogs together. I know, right. They could just like have like, a little like team. Like a fart symphony. Totally. Uh, <laughs> I, did, I didn't know you liked farts so much. Oh my God, I do. I literally bought a soundboard app. Just I was like, oh, this one, the mm-hmm. free one doesn't have the fart sound. I'm like, am I going to spend a dollar for a fart? And the answer was yes. yes! <laughs> have you seen Wet Hot American Summer? Of course. With the fart soundtrack. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay, good. That's good. Okay, now we're best friends forever. Yeah. High five. Let me like get a BFF necklace from like Claire's. <laughs> and then we'll... Let, let's get a <laughs> of approval. How about exactly, that? Exactly. So Sarah, you you hail all the way from Ohio, right? I do. Yes. Tell me what city. Uh, I'm from a small farm town. Like. Uh, well, I would say I went to Ross High School. Okay. Um, which I technically lived between two villages, which is which was Okeana. Two and villages. They were called <laughs> villages. They weren't officially towns. Called Okeana and Shandon. I love it. And um, Shandon had a couple antique stores and a graveyard because as one does and then right. and then okiana had oh they had like the it was like a pizza gas station and a video rental place wow because like that was when you rented vhs tape oh yeah so it's like a kid I miss you had that. like a right i miss that you like go to the store you peruse you like look at stuff you like the take best. time or like when you see like somebody that you're like oh yeah hey hey what are you renting yeah what are you renting what do you recommend or or it's like you almost have to censor your taste you're like i want to go for the rom-com but i see some friends from high school so i'm gonna go for terminator right right yeah exactly like yeah i'm gonna watch this terminator and like behind it it's like you know the best. sleepless in seattle or something and like you <laughs> felt like a renegade if you didn't re- if you didn't rewind right be kind rewind yeah totally yeah it's so funny Sad. like i think about that now and like you know i have a son who's three and like watching movies is like, oh, why is iTunes not working? And you're like, no, back in the day we had to drive to get a movie. Yeah, you did. And he'd be like, why? Why? Why, why would, would you, you do just, that? Why would you do that when you just have it on your watch? Yeah, exactly. It's like, or on your phone. You can watch anything. That's crazy. Yeah, it's really weird, actually. I, I, I think about that. Like, 
because I'm assuming you're also a millennial, right? Oh yeah. So like you grow up analog, but then you're you're sort of like your later years were digital. I love the digital. Mm-hmm. I go back to the analog. So you have a VHS I want, player. I don't have a VHS player, but I I want to watch movies in like film, like seventy millimeter, thirty five. Oh. I'd love to do that. I would love to have a room where I could just watch movies like that. Because oh. I mean, I watch all the DVDs and the Blu-rays, and sure. that's cool, but. There's something about watching a film on, mm-hmm. like, I'm trying to, you know, this is how weird I am. So, Steven Spielberg uh-huh. said, you know what his favorite movie is? Jaws. No, I'm just kidding. I have no, idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. No. No, okay. Um, his favorite movie is Lawrence of Arabia. He watches it every week. What? Wait. Isn't what? this crazy? Why? What's the. What's it the... made him want to direct movies. It made him want to direct movies, and he thinks no movie he's ever done measures up to it. So he watches that movie. He said for a long time he watched it every day, but now he watches it once a week just okay. to get inspired and look at sweeping shots. And, and he's like, and I've never seen that movie. And I'm like, I need to see this in a theater. He's I've never like, seen it. Me neither. So I'm like looking for theaters where I could see it on 35 millimeter, 70 millimeter, whatever. And so nobody's could, doing it. Yeah. Well, no, some people are doing it. Oh, they are? Some theaters are doing it like once every two weeks or three weeks. Really? Yeah. So like I'm trying to find this like time where I can just, it's a four hour movie too. That's another thing. That's a commitment. That's a commitment. But That's a commitment. That's like I had meal time movie. in the middle of yeah, it. Yeah. I need to use the restroom. Like, I think it's, well, they have an intermission. Okay, good. But then you go back and you watch <laughs> like. I've never seen a four-hour movie before. Here's what I find interesting that Steven Spielberg is doing. You would assume Steven Spielberg is a is a busy man, yes, right? You yes. know, he's got a lot of things going on. I'm assuming, of Steven, course. if you're out there and you're listening, <laughs> you can tell us. You can call me and tell me and if you're t- busy or he, not. He can cast you. But that he's got four hours of his week every week right. to sit down to watch something he's already seen like fifteen thousand. But you times. know what I got to say? Like, like I've I've seen a lot of his movies, mm-hmm. and I have been disappointed with some of his movies. Sure. I've loved a couple of them, a lot of them. But I have really respected that he said that. I was like, here's a guy that goes back to the reason he made movies mm-hmm. every week to get that excited. What about movie? Making movies. If he had said, what movie could he have said that would have made you lose all respect for him if he had said it was his favorite movie that he watched every week? Oh, my God. Like, what would that have been? Tree of Life. Have you seen Tree of no, Life? No, I haven't. Oh, my God. I okay, st- apparently, I still... don't see it. Is the, is the... I, you know what? I read it. It got five stars in Rolling Stones. And my okay. parents were like, are there any good movies? And I said, I heard Tree of Life is amazing. Okay. And they went and saw it. And they were like, Nikki, that movie was one of the worst movies. And I was like, really? <laughs> so I watched it. And I was like. It's seriously one. It's a beautifully shot movie. Okay. But it's indulgent in all levels that you okay. could possibly think a film could be indulgent. Sure. Not enjoyable. I've been to a lot of film festivals. So you know. So I know what so indulgent. You know, you know. I'm, does it start with a writer oh. in a coffee shop in Los Angeles oh. typing on a keyboard? It, that would be really indulgent. <laughs> that'd be too. That'd be cliche. Like times a, there's like a lot of sick people in his life or her life, you know. And then there's a cough somewhere. And yeah, exactly. And there's love and like you know. You are awesome. You are fire, oh, you're a firecracker. You. So you you thank grew you. up in Ohio. I did grow up in Ohio. Small town. I did. Yes. Went cow tipping on the weekends. Um, actually, see, I um, know. here's what's funny is that we used to do cow drops. Ooh, what's a cow a drop? Cow drop. <laughs> that does not sound fun. <laughs> you take a cow and you just you just chuck it and see where it. I'm just joking. What? I was I'm like, joking. dude, that's <laughs> inhumane. <laughs> no, happens at all. But no. is it cool? Um, well, they explode. No, I'm no, kidding. No, wow. That's terrible. I mean, this is horrible. I like <laughs> animals. I like animals. Okay, so sure, yeah, dude. A cow drop is where we would have. <laughs> they would grid out our our football field, right? and you would bid on um, squares, and you would bid money on the squares. You know, this was to raise money for the school or you know the sports of our school or whatever. And then after a football game, they would send a bunch of cows out onto the field, and wherever they took a dump, if they took a dump on your square, you would split the pot with the, that's amazing. With the school. So there was called, yeah, a cow, a cow drop, yeah. So that's what yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was something related to shit. Yeah, totally. It totally was. You really and made it took my a long time. Dreams. Sometimes you know the cows. They just you know maybe they just didn't have to poop. Maybe they pooped in the. And so were, were there people like right cheering over. or like? Yeah, and like they'd wow. be so good because you could kind of see if you were up high enough in the stands, you could kind of see where the numbers were, right? And stuff, you know. But then sometimes it's like I remember one time it took a really long time and people were like, I gotta go. Like, They're like I cannot. I like can't there's cows next this. door. You know, like I gotta go. Like I've seen this before. Yeah. And did you take drama classes? We only had one drama class in my 
um, high school in my high school and that was it one drama class yeah one drama class and it was our, like acting 101 it was just like drama so it was like it was like the history of it oh you didn't even get to perform no what so we had a, our theater program was run by pat gans who was lovely which i need to like go find her and reach out to her yeah because she was amazing like by the way i'm a movie star right. if you <laughs> I, don't know I just be like thanks for being inspirational yeah pat. no it's that's what it's about that's she it. was really cool and she our <laughs> Our theater was part of our gym nasium. So like your gym nasium. Gymnasium. <laughs> it was a, <laughs> exactly. And it was a stage. It was a wooden stage. And then we would set up the chairs in the gym to look onto the stage. Oh, that's awesome. Like every like, like you're the building the stage. Well, we would set up the chairs like as in like we would set up folding chairs every night. That's awesome. And then half the time the lights didn't work and they would like flicker off and on. But and... you know what? There's still an energy when you get through a performance mm -hmm. with all those obstacles. Yeah. We had zero money. Like, our the department had, like, and it was, like, a handful of us just, you know. And, like, none of our sets were, like. A lot. You guys were all painting them. And, yeah, yeah but like that's amazing. It was, like, us as high school students. But that's what I'm saying. That Like, there's something that is really beautiful about that. That's because true. it's, like, you come together. There's a bond. Like, mm -hmm. there's a synergy when you kind of all work towards a goal and a vision. And you're creating every part of it. Totally. Did you so I, do theater school too? Oh, yeah. Big time. You're like, heck yeah. I loved it. I was big time into it. I loved every aspect of it. You did every I mean, musical? I did Bye Bye Birdie. I was a lead in Bye Bye Birdie. Ooh, okay. And I did I did some plays and I fell in love with it. I really Do you actually, still do theater? I don't do theater anymore. Okay. I mean, you do theater by being a performer though. I secretly, between, you know I'm a musician. Right. That's what, always what I do by trade. But I secretly want to direct. <gasps> That's what I really want to do. You gotta I'm go like, start watch Lawrence of Arabia, or you gotta. What's a, your favorite movie? Why do you see that? Shawshank Redemption. Oh, that's a great film. That's a good one. Now you need to watch it every single week. I do actually. Do I you really? I don't watch it every week, but if it's on, I can't. No matter what, if, even if I have a meeting, I'm like, uh -huh. I have to watch this right now. Okay. I'll, I'll just make an excuse and be okay. late. Like, it's that. It's that kind of movie. For it's me. that kind of movie. It's just for like you. I notice new things in it. There's a little new. You know who wrote it? Who? Stephen King. Oh, I did know that. I did I mean, know that. You know why I know that is because today I was at the grocery store and there was a magazine and it was like the something something of Steve. It was like you know promoting mm -hmm. different Stephen King movies and it was like little pictures and one of the pictures was Shawshank and I was like I didn't You're like what? Huh? Yeah, he's a badass. Mm -hmm. Stephen King is other like than one the, the movie Mist. Mist. What's Mist? It's just don't. Just You're like, don't. You like don't go there. The product place in it and alone was just. You give it the <laughs> of approval. I would give it like four farts. <laughs> Yep, that's a, good, that's a really good one. That's, my that's a really good one. Good I was one. testing you right now, and you passed with That's a good one. Color. That's a really good one. I like that part. You know what it is, is that you can just get a lot of them in. It just yeah. feels really emphatic. And you, you didn't think I would, I would hit four in a row like that, but you know mm -hmm. what? I was like, I'm gonna, I'm like, I'm gonna impress mm -hmm. her. Right I feel good now. about that. And a dog bark, because I see a dog bark on here, could be a fart. <laughs> Well, not this one. Yeah, uh, not sometimes, quite. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, but. it's not. It's. I like this one too. Just to like, if I want to put somebody out of their misery. Oh, dang. Just that's it. Right, right. Like that's if there's like too rifle. many, you get. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no. I'm done. done. You're like, this is not the interview I thought I was getting. This is to. great. Are you kidding me? I like just shooting the. Can I say poop? Shooting the poop. <laughs> 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 it oh just sounds scapey at this point. All right, so. So good. You, you what? Do you remember the plays that you did? Yes, we did. Um, what a transition! Wait, hold on. Let me think here. Okay, we did. Um, we did a play called Bugs. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! It sounds fun. I mean, it was like a really bad musical. Who cares? No, but I mean, it was super fun, and I remember we always had like all the snafus. Like, I nobody showed up at one point. Oh, I remember, and I was a ladybug, fun. and I remember nobody showed up, and I just like they just like left me on stage, and I was like, I was like. You're like, I made my costume. Just like riffing it. My mom made my costume. Oh, that's, really dude, sweet. shout know. out to your mom. Shout, my mom's like super awesome like that. High five. High five, mom. Moms are great. Moms They're are the great. best. Um, what else? Oh, we did, Um, oh, what's the worst, best Christmas carol ever? Or what's that, what's that play called? The best, worst, know. the best, worst Christmas carol I don't know. It's You're just of, being like fancy a, with words it's to a me right <laughs> It's a book. That was fun. I'm okay. To, oh, we, oh, I know we did, um. Oh, what's the thing with like? There's a chick named Cherry in it, and there's like a bunch of greasers, and there's like a gun that comes out, and it's called. <laughs> thank you. And it's called. This is terrible. 
I have zero memory anymore. You know what? You have to do some reviewing. It's not The Rescuers. <laughs> That's a Disney film. What's the movie? The, the Outsiders. The Outsiders. The Outsiders. The outsiders. You did The Outsiders. That's like a really, like, that's like a hardcore play. It's a super hardcore play, and then it's a super Who hardcore play. Who chose that? My, I guess our, our theater. The drama teacher's like, they need something edgy. <laughs> this is, we need a knife fight. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> something to bring the kids in. We totally need the kids to come in on this. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. amazing. So is that where you got bit by the butt? No, I, <laughs> my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Cordes, had us do Shakespeare. Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? Wow. I know, isn't that amazing? She had us do Julius Caesar. Wow. And Wait, I, your sixth grade teacher made you do Julius like Caesar? Like, how badass is, can I, can I curse? Yeah. Okay. All the time. Okay, great. I say badass all the time. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, she was like, we're going to do Julius Caesar. And I was like, sweet. And we all had to audition, and I got the role of Mark Anthony. Ooh, that's a race. Because it was role. like no right, but then I found out You're the traitor. The girl who was playing Julius Caesar got to be stabbed on stage. And I was like, fuck that. I like, want that I role. I want that role. I want to get stabbed and die on stage. <laughs> Dreams. Dream. <laughs> but I was really like, I was like, that would be so much more fun. And so I traded her. I was you like You traded roles? Oh yeah, I totally traded. I mean I approved it. I approved it by the teacher first. Okay, I see. Right. You're right. working the system. I worked the 11 system. Years old. But I was also like I want to do the fun stuff. I want to do the weird stuff. Yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to get stabbed on stage. I don't want to have the big speech. I want yeah. a bunch you, of. You're like I want blood and guts. Yeah. Or. Yeah. I see where you're. I want to lay on a table dead for half the play. You know what's funny? It's like <laughs> if I ever did acting again, I'd want to be that character that everybody's like, "Who the hell is that?" And just be in like a bunch of like crazy costumes and weird makeup. Awesome. And, and just saying just obnoxious things. You in should the go out. You live in nah. LA. Nah. Why nah. not? You know, I've done it. I've had uh, agents send me out on some things. Okay. And it's just, it's, I think it's ridiculous. I think the whole system, <laughs> I, I commend actress, it is, actresses it is. and actors like yourself. Because it's like, it's the most ridiculous thing. Because it it's is. like, you can be trained. Right. And some guy or girl could just be like, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And they can just go out and audition. And that, you have to compete with that. It's like, it's a little bit ridiculous. You know what? I actually am not mad about that. You like that. I don't know. I think it's more just that, like, I think that, like, there are some people who have, like, God-given talents or, you know, what I mean, certain gifts or whatever. Like, right. obviously, you're very musically inclined, right. Right? right? And I'm sure that that is something that whether you started at five or you started at 11, that's just, like, a skill. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, and then it's, like, how much do you work that muscle? And so I think there are some people who are just, like, really good at playing pretend. And I think that, you know. Well, that, I'm not saying that, they, that those people that are good should not audition. Right. But what about the people that are terrible that waste a lot of people's time? Yeah. Why should they audition? Instead yeah. of like put them through like, okay, you're not ready to audition yeah. yet. There should be that barometer. Actually, you're totally right. Because there are times where there should be a barometer. you're like, oh, you just like your mom American idoled you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like your and mom that, and, told and you, know you that you were. It happens more with acting than I think any other career. So it's like yeah. it's it's the hardest, I think. Yeah. I think it's the hardest craft. I think I really, really? do. I really do. I think it's like one of the most amazing and hardest and also the weirdest because of the way it's run. It's run. It's like the wild, wild west. But you, there's a lot of fire. I always say that there's fiery hoops you have to jump through. Yeah. It's like just a lot of like, there's like always a flaming hoop ahead. Yes. And it's like, oh God, can I get through that one? And then the piranha pool on the other side, you know? Like so that's so you went from Julius Caesar. <laughs> You, then you got to Bugs. Then I got to Bugs. And then when did you come out here? Well, I, so I, go I got, school. I did. So I, I was like, what do I want to do? And um, so I decided that I didn't know you could make a living as an actor. I decided I was going to get a theater. I was going to do theater for the deaf. And I was going to get a sign language interpreting wow. degree. What? I know. Super random. That's my amazing. parents had friends that were deaf prior to myself and my brother being born. And so my, and my mom was a speech pathologist and she used sign language with all of her students, That's all of amazing. them. So That's that was amazing. really cool. So cool. I, it was sort of something that was part of our lives-ish. And I did dance with sign language for a period of time. And uh, so I got a degree in theater and dance. And then I came out here and I got a second degree in sign language interpreting wow. from Pierce College because they have a phenomenal program. Yeah. And I interpreted- I played at Pierce College. I know Pierce you've, College. You played at Pierce. Oh yeah. You know, Pierce has changed so much in the last like 10, 12, really? 14, oh, yeah, it's very different now. Like it's become bigger? It's huge, yeah, and wow. they've like really ducked it out. I mean, it used good to just, for them. yeah. Good for them, that's well, good. Well, I mean, they offer really good programs yeah. and yeah. classes. They deserve and, that. 
Yeah, I mean, I really think the LACC, I'm going to talk about the LACC. I really think the LACCD <laughs> is a really good, like, I think it's great, especially if, at, at the cost. It's such right. a low cost to go so to school. So did you come here for school first? So I went So I went to Indiana University. Oh, nice. You're a Hoosier. I'm a Hoosier. Are, are you a basketball Ooh. fan? I'm a huge basketball are fan. Are you? Okay, One of my best friends went to Indiana. I went to USC. Oh, I'm so he sorry. He started, hey. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we're not a basketball fan. We have the Lakers. So that's it's true. Like, that's true. It's like, Oh, we don't play college basketball, but we have a professional team that's amazing. That's very true. But Hoosier basketball, I mean, it's kind of classic. Yeah, like you and can't the movie go wrong. Hoosiers is like one of the greatest of all time. All of I it. Mean, it's just, breaking away. Like, yeah, amazing. There's actually amazing. a lot of good like. Oh yeah. Old school. Indiana Dude, that films. must have been amazing. So you studied theater and dance there. I did. Yes. And then you came to Los Angeles. And then Angeles. I came to LA. And what made you come to LA? You're like, I need to do this. Um, no, I came to LA because I wanted to do the interpreting program that was out here. So was this Pierce the only school that so offered Pierce that? was uh, well CSUN offers um, I think they do I mean now they offer more like educational like uh, deaf education studies classes right um, I don't want to misspeak because it's been a while since I've been in school so I know that their program has changed but Pierce was like up there and wow. top rated and that's amazing yeah and so I came out and it was kind of funny because it's a it's like a two year program so then I did that and while I was in school I started looking for jobs on Craigslist because I had like three jobs, you know, when I was going to school full time and because you know how it is. Yeah. Surviving in LA. Is, it's a thing, man. Yeah. And so I started looking up stuff and I started finding jobs on Craigslist for, um, this is going to sound terrible, shoe models and foot models. That's amazing. <laughs> so then I became That's awesome. a shoe model. That's amazing. <laughs> which is Seriously? Really weird. Yeah. Which is like really weird when I, when I was in school and I started doing um, pay less commercials as just a foot. <laughs> And so, That's and I, awesome. and I remember I got this set. I'll never forget. I was in, so you were a step ahead of. I was the, a step ahead. <laughs> Nobody's ever said that to me. Thank you. See, That's so good. Yeah, I'm here. That's what that I'm was for. a good punchline. See, one more time. Hey. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> so I was a shoe model. So, what was your favorite shoe <laughs> that I've ever worn? Yeah. Ever? Well, that you modeled, or oh, I mean, maybe. there's so many. Give me shoes. both. <laughs> there's so many shoes. I'm a boot girl. Okay. Did you model a boot? I mean, yeah, yeah, you wear everything. You wear all the shoes, all of them, all the time. <laughs> all the shoes, all the time. Yeah. Shoe slut. I was, yeah, totally. I was a super shoe you slut. You're like, I will wear it for anyone. Yes. And I'll get paid for it. Yes. Show me where. And I got I to get, to. I got flown to like Vegas and New York and That's amazing. Um, Seattle one time, which was really weird, but you know, it makes sense. And I worked for a bunch of really big high end companies. And I realized like? uh, I worked for um, Pour La Victoire, which is sort of like a. There, I mean, people might not know them as well, but they're like sort of a higher end company. And um, Nine West family, there was a bunch of subsidiaries underneath them. Amazing. Like Rachel Roy, I did some stuff I think for them a while ago. Payless. You're doing and... mostly high end shoes. No, I no, I did ready wear too. I did okay. um, Chinese laundry and Seychelles, and oh my god, this is and like me back. like did you were you like looking at other shoe models? You're like, oh my god, she's got the best ankles ever. <laughs> like, how did you compete? How do you compete with somebody's feet? Um, <laughs> what am I, Dr. Seuss? Right, I mean, it had to... <laughs> so good. There's so many jokes about feet. Like, so, too many. So good, so good. How did I, I mean, no, it was more than it was just, they. it was always about how your foot was shaped because they wanted a foot to fill out the shoes how do you correctly. Know? I know. Like, like if they looked uh -huh. at my foot, they'd be like, "You cannot do this. Like, you were not out. born with the gift." Out. <laughs> there was a company that didn't like my calves because they didn't fill out the boots. Yeah. The bastards. And I was like, I was like, sorry. You should have gone in there and just. <laughs> <laughs> Over sorry. my calves. Yeah. This is for my calves. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's your exit. Because after every gunfight, I fart. That's your, that's that's your that's your mark. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what? I gotta tell you, I'm mm -hmm. gonna give you a huge compliment. I've been doing this show for six years. Yeah, this is definitely the most I've laughed in. Oh, interview. really? Definitely by far. Here's the problem. So I don't you want don't you to think I'm always a... this unprofessional. I don't know. I don't think you've had enough farts in your interviews. What well, I'm close to meeting my. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta break records and break wind. Okay. I'm breaking wind records. Wind records. And I'm going the distance all the way. So you were <laughs> modeling feet. I mean, shoes. modeling shoes, yes. not feet, but modeling your feet. I was modeling my feet in Did shoes. Did you have a foot that was getting <laughs> that was getting more work? Yeah. One foot you was did. Done. You did. I you know, had to. I know. Both my feet were, I guess, good. I didn't know this, but I guess I had really good feet. 
<laughs> this is crazy. I'm crying. Oh my god, this is so good. So, so your feet were well, equally talented. This, this is amazing. My feet, I think. Oh I feel god. like my feet. I figured out my feet had talent before I did. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. I'm literally crying. <laughs> So you're he just, is literally crying. You're you guys. literally you were just trying to um, walk, walk in your <laughs> feet shoes. I'm just trying to film my to film the mission. Oh Ooh. yes. Okay, okay. We're gonna get serious. Now. <laughs> How many takes would it take you to do a foot commercial or a print ad? I mean, like one. You were just like, you're like, this is all I need. It was a lot of shoe shows, which is where you're, it's just, you wear like a, like you would work for a company and they would put like all the girls in the same outfit or like similar outfits. And then it would just be about your, um, your shoes. And wow. so you would literally go off stage and change shoes. Did you so have like, to do like makeup and stuff for your feet? Um, occasionally, yeah. Yeah, because you have to, because yeah. the light and stuff. Well, like that, right? for, I remember for Payless having my feet, they would put makeup on my feet to try to match it to me because there was this big tile beautiful model on that you know what's so funny is her face is on some hair billboard that's been in hollywood for years and every time i drive past it, i think how's that chick's feet <laughs> this is such a weird You're thought like, that bitch had candles so she, <laughs> she was just really tall and she didn't have size six shoes the size six shoe is what the is the oh, that's like the magic that's the number that's the magic number so if you have a size it. six foot you yeah. are like the Michael Jordan of foot yeah. modeling. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Some of my best friends I met. How did you even fall into that? Well, because I was on Craigslist. <laughs> and you were just like foot model? Yeah. I was just, I really was like, oh, I just need to find some like extra side hustle money while I'm in school. And I was like working in Malibu at like two different stores, which is also super random. And I was like, okay, I just need to find something else. Right. And I was start, and I was looking for anything. I was like, right. it was it acting stuff? Was it... Yeah. Um, you know, and 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 they were like, must have size six, and I was like, oh yeah, You're like that's me. Yeah, and they were like, must yeah. have nice feet. I'm like, yeah. You're like, I got nice feet. I got nice feet. Sure, yeah. fuck it. And I went in, and I remember I met with this agent who's who was um who's crazy, whose name I will not mention. You have to be crazy. You cannot be sane if you're like I'm a foot agent. She well a step above them all. She was she's I used that joke she was before, a little cuckoo. You know what? You can still you can I think you should bust out all of your I think you should bust out all your shoe puns. Feet puns, shoe puns. When you I, I assume you're not with that agent anymore. No. You should have stuck and I don't... foot in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm not I'm not. Uh yeah. And they were like, Oh, you have really nice feet. I was like, Oh, cool, great. What do you know? And then yeah, I got paid really well, and I got a lot of free shoes out of it. <laughs> so when you went home after the first audition, uh -huh. were you talking to your feet? You're like, <laughs> you got this, you guys. Are, you got this. There wasn't auditions. Wait for the callback. <laughs> there wasn't like auditions. Like you would, I had like foot pictures. Like I had a foot card. I had a card that had like pictures of my feet right, on it. Right. And then you would go and you would and you would do like a meet and greet and you would try their shoes on and then they would be like, oh, your foot fits really well into our shoe. That's amazing. Yeah, I remember meeting at a hotel once for Enzo and Gelino was a company I worked for. And they were like so, they were like the nicest. I think the one guy now runs uh, Charles David. Wow. Yeah, he runs Charles David and he was like the nicest guy. And he like, I tried on all these shoes and then they like gave me free leather boots. And I was like, That's and then awesome. they hired me and I That's was like. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. No, there's always cool perks with stuff like that. You yeah, know? free shoes. And I'm what? sure you went to conferences, conventions. Tons. See? Tons of them. I'm already seeing your whole career. In Vegas. Career. <laughs> in Vegas. Laid out in front mm -hmm. of me. That's amazing. So you did the magic show? Yeah, dude. See, you know you're... Know my shit. What do you... Gosh, oh my God. See? How do you know about magic? <laughs> well, I'm a little bit of a magician myself. No. <laughs> Um, that must have been cool. Yeah, it was really fun. For a small town girl from Ohio, now yeah. you're in Vegas. It was super weird, and, and then I was like in school, and then I was interpreting... Like, I interpret for about like a year. I like now. that you went to all these crazy extremes Yeah. for art. Like, yeah. that makes me respect you because it's like you went to all the levels that you had to go to get what you needed to be a great artist. That's yeah. what it takes. I got a lot of life experience. No, that's what it is. I'm, that's I'm, true. I mean, I, I know, like, we've been laughing and joking. Right. But I mean, I'm being serious. That's <laughs> well, thank you. a lot of artists. Like, I find a lot of artists to be sometimes too tunnel vision. With mm -hmm. either their craft or who they are as people. Oh my it's god, hundred like, percent. I know you. You probably see that, especially coming from Ohio. You're like, it's not just about being an artist. It's like, 
be a good person, be well-rounded. Tell me about other things that you do. It's how can you, miss that. okay. So in my, so my interpreting teacher, um, Cindy Herbst, who is a, is phenomenal and super talented. She would always say to us, um, how can you interpret what you don't know? And I feel like it's totally applies as an actor or an artist. How can you, how can you interpret what you don't know? And so like as an interpreter, it was like, oh, you need to do your research and learn about this topic and, you know, make sure that there's no, any nuanced, um, vocabulary or whatever. Um, and she would also say this, which I, I think about all the time. It's not about you. It's about the work. Yeah. It's not about you. You're an artist. Yeah, Cause you're like, you're just channeling something. Right. You're so like, don't you ever, don't, aren't you ever like, oh no, like my work is garbage. And then you feel like it's a reflection of you. I think a lot of artists you know feel it's that like, way. You, you have to like, for me, it's like, now I'm at the point where it's like, I just don't even want to be the filter for it. It's like, mm. I don't care if it's great or terrible. It's me just creating and just not being egocentric about it and being critical and just, I want it to be like this, like, but that comes with, you proved it to yourself. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't need to, I don't need anybody's approval anymore. I've right. had the amazing conversations with Paul McCartney or like, Oof. you know, the Dave Matthews or whoever it is yeah. that, that gave me those votes of confidence. But it's, it's amazing how much the industry wants you not to believe in yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah. so it's like amazing to see that you went to all these, you kind of took this like roundabout approach, which I love, like a not conventional approach Mm-mm. to discovering what is the flow of inspiration for you. And yeah. I love that, you know? So then when was the moment where you were like, I should be acting, I should be. Well, I don't during wanna, the commercials. I don't, I don't want my feet to. I don't want the, just my feet, right. <laughs> I, when I was doing the Payless commercials, I remember watching the girls and being like, I can do that. Like, right. that's not, yeah. I mean, that's, you're just smiling and walking down steps and people, and I didn't know you could get paid. Right. I didn't know, I was like, whoa. Right, right. People are getting paid. And so then I started like figuring out, oh, I gotta start auditioning for stuff because I didn't know that was a thing I could actually do. I thought, oh, why well, you could just do theater or you're famous. Right. I thought there was like two tiers and that's it. It's like you're either A-lister or some random folks who maybe do some TV and then there's theater and that's it. And And I didn't realize that there's an entire industry of stuff to do and I, then had this really crazy opportunity where <clears throat> I got to audition for a hosting job, a television hosting job. I'd never hosted before. And it's because I had done like the pilot, but I was like a contestant in the pilot. And they came back to me and they said, hey, will you come audition for this thing, for the Reels channel? It's, um... And I, at the time, had been interpreting for about a year and a half. And I was like, oh man, I was like, I really feel like I need to give this a go. And I remember I called my husband. And I was like, I think I need to say no. I was working at um, LA Pierce College as an interpreter. And I was like, I think I need to like tell them I can't be there full time next year. Cause I was balancing auditioning and right. interpreting. And I was like trying to do it all. And a week later I auditioned for this, to be this host. And I went into this audition in a green turtleneck and it was a green screen audition. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. And I was like, I like, showed up. Oh my God, seriously? The producer came out and goes, do you have any other tops? And I remember I looked around the room and all the girls were dressed like real glam and sexy right. and they had like these low cut tops on and they all looked fantastic. They all looked beautiful and st- stunning. And I was like, hey guys, I'm just like a little Midwest <laughs> girl with like my green turtleneck on. That's cute. And so but that's they, what probably made you stand out. I mean, they were like, oh, we're going to hire the head and the hands. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this head and hands? Who's Let me see the rest of her. Right, yeah. Does she have good feet? <laughs> exactly. Oh, she's got feet. Don't worry. <laughs> the feet are good. So yeah, and they I booked it. I hired, I got hired. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and then what I, was the show? It was called Movie Mob. And I was on it for a year. I did 52 episodes. Wow. 50, 50 or 52 episodes. Yeah, every week. Was and there a learning curve? Were you like, oh, I don't know how to ask these questions? I mean, a little yeah. bit. It was all straight to camera. It was, all te- it was mostly just teleprompter stuff. And... I, you're, you're good with working with people. I can already tell. You know. I will. I just am really good at talking. Right. Right. No, but I mean, there's a certain. There's a certain. I don't know. It's kind of like um, kind of have to have swagger when it comes to mm. social interactions, and right. you either have it or you don't, mm. and you have it for sure. So Thank I know you. when. Is there an applause like, button? Thank you. Oh, hold on. Oh, oops. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> there is. Hold on. <laughs> oh, hold or, on. Oh, oh. Yeah. See. 
It's the only downside, you know. They, I have to go. Th- I have to go through this whole scrolling process. We're just monking around wow. here, you know. Wow. You know? Oh, there's chimpanzees too. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Oh man. See. That's good. I like that. And what if, is the toilet? I, okay, I see the toilet. What's the toilet? Can well, I hit go it? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. oh. But it's like a long flush. It's like we're going. We're going. That toilet definitely is not saving any water. No, that's not it's, a water. It's reckless. It's, it is, <laughs> that's not an energy. It is, with efficient. reckless abandon, it's like I'm flushing. Right. I'm going for it. I'm flushing it all. That's like a down, if down it's if it's yellow, let line. it mellow, guys. Okay. <laughs> like don't use that's that one. N- that's the unmellow. <laughs> that's the unmellow right. toilets. So so you did the green screen audition. You got the part. I got it. Yeah. Did you love hosting? I did. I loved it. I just and I like the people I worked with. I worked for this company called iBoogie. And the guy who started iBoogie Woody, he actually invented pop up video. Oh, that's amazing. Isn't that cool? I love pop up video. Right? Huge I would, like, part of it. learn so much. Be like, so much. I didn't know that they came out here. He was ahead of his time. I mean, that is essentially what all of our social media is now. Yeah. It's basically totally, pop up video. Totally. But like pop up video, somebody was writing the stuff. And com- but that's a, what a crazy idea that he just was like. People should know more information about these right. music videos here. Yeah, so they were the iBoogie was just lovely to work for, and they just were so like loving and fostering and just helpful, and it was great. I mean, I just I had nothing but good stuff, and then after that, I just kept auditioning rolling. and rolling, yeah. and um, I, just I saw got, you did some stuff with Grimm, right? I did. I did an episode of Grimm. You did some Family Guy stuff. I did. I did. That must have been cool. It was a voiceover, cool. obviously. Yeah. Because you're not an animated character. <laughs> I mean, you're animated, but you're not an animated character. Yeah, I did. I that guess. must have been cool. Was that, was that some really of your cool. first voiceover work? Um, I think I had done some like weird little other things, like like commercially things for like random side stuff for friends. But yeah, that was like my first big, yeah, VO thing. And you did some like dating shows too, right? You did some. What, what was the What was the show? You did some some I, like um, romantic show. It was not like I did a, Days of Our Lives. Days of Our Lives, but you did that's another. That's romantic, right? You did like, yeah, that's soap opera. That's like a classic. Dude, soap opera actors are legit. Like They're legit. Hardcore legit. Have you ever been on a soap set? I've never been on a soap set. I didn't realize how rigorous. They shoot 120 pages a day. Wow. So like each half of the day they're doing 60 pages. Some people are doing 30 pages and you get one take. That so like crazy. when you know that and then you watch a soap, you're like, damn, right. those folks are talented motherfuckers. Right. Like right. they are doing this in one take. Well, there is one, <laughs> one color they're playing. It's, it's pretty dramatic. Right. There's no, uh, there's no joking scene. There, there's a little bit. There's a little bit, but not, not much. You know right. what I mean though. It's like, it's, right. it's like a one trick party. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you mean. It yeah. is a regular schedule and they are like, very dedicated and you know the hard thing too it's like once you go down that it's like sometimes once you get like a big role it you're you that's your role you yeah. you're not doing anything else so it's like you become part of this niche market which is amazing because that's every actor's dream to just have any kind of market like oh my that, gosh right? right and also just like having a consistent job like yes. there's like you know most actors don't say oh my god i love my consistent job right because if that usually implies it's you know doing something that's not acting right so to have like a consistent acting job i think is you know that's always sort of the dream so let's fa- let's fast know. forward to this show that you are about to it's about to premiere in a, yeah. a couple of days yeah in uh it's a week, september a week? 21st so a week from saturday is that right oh my god i think it is a week from saturday okay. yes wow that's gonna be exciting i know so Talk to me about this because this is crazy. It is crazy. I, wanna, I have so many questions just about this. We we've already asked questions about things about <laughs> your career that I wasn't even prepared for. But parts, parts ta- and feet. talk just a little about a bit about the project because it is a heavy, heavy issue. It's a true story. Yes. Go ahead. I'll let um, you have the floor. Uh. So, um, Nexium was a self help group that was founded by Keith Raniere, and um, it was a it was an MLM, and people would get involved and take these self help classes which I'm sure w- w- did help people. And then there were other levels of the classes. So there was like a men's program called SOP and a women's program called Jeunesse. And then from those programs, people were chosen, you could say, to sort of then eventually become women were chosen to become part of this, this sex cult. Um, it was like sex slaves, right? Yeah, so it was a master <clears throat> and a slave women uh, it, just women, and then they were, and then they would get branded. I, there were jokes going through my head of about 
how next year, like signing up for next year, that is a real 180 <laughs> when you're like, I'm going to find inspiration and motivation. Yeah. And in about six months, I'm going to be a sex slave. That yeah. is well, you a didn't, hell of a road. A lot of people didn't know because it was, because right. um, a lot, I think, is my understanding. I, you know, Did you ever get a phone call from somebody that was in Nexium? No. So I got like two or three from random fans. And they really? would talk to me about like, Oh, it's amazing because it's like a healthy lifestyle and it's, you do meditation. And I you, didn't know oh that. Oh, man. And I was just like not buying into it. I was like, you know, I don't really, yeah, I'm good, man. Like, I, I'm not into any of that. That's cool. Oh, my God. Because it's like you knew. You just knew if you, you know. And there's there's still more companies that do shit like this. Well, Landmark. But Landmark, yeah. I don't believe has Herbal a... Life is one of those. If you ever get a phone call from any... Herbal Life? Okay, well, big oh, time, to know. Okay. Big time, yeah. There's I, others, too. I mean, they're not... I don't think, like, these other places have sex cults. No, I think no, way. no, but right. you don't know. I mean, maybe in 10 years we'll find out. Because <laughs> Nexium was never something like this. Mm-mm. That's not No, and people who took classes didn't uh, never knew. Right. You know, so, so when it all came out, there were people who were shocked. I As my understanding from what right. I've read online and stuff. But the movie is based on um, a book. So Catherine Oxenberg, her daughter, India, was in um, Nexium and got pretty high up. In, she was like a recruiter or something, she right? She became a recruiter. I mean, anybody who got pretty high up, I think, you know, part of the deal was like, bring people in because we're doing this amazing thing and you're, you know, you're, you're um, self-reflecting and, you know, I mean, and, and I think with any self-help stuff, like, yeah. You're, right. You know what but I mean? You, it's like you get brainwashed so easily. Yeah. So her daughter was involved in it. And so she wrote a book that details, I believe it's seven years of her life to get her daughter out right. of the cult. I remember seeing this on the Today Show. Yes. And yeah. so the movie is based on her book. Wow. Um, about how to get her out. And the character that I play, I play Allison Mack. Allison Mack, who's in Smallville. I know. Which is I mean, crazy. I mean, I used to watch Smallville. I know. Which was just really wild. And it's crazy to think you're a successful actress, not you, but Alison Mack, but you mm-hmm. are a successful actress. But I mean, like she had things going and yeah. she was doing this other thing that was like, what are you thinking? What are you, you're going to jeopardize everything that you've worked for. It's like. I mean, she was in it for, I think I calculated it was like 12 years, 12 or wow. 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. That which is was, crazy. Which is a long time. You know, I mean, I, uh, I mean, the story is pretty wild. There's actually some really great articles online. The CBC did a podcast on it. With Sarah Edmondson, who was one of the um, women that was in it for a while. And it was like all, I assume, over the age of 18 women that were being sex slaves? Or was it kind of like Um, like Epstein style? You know, I don't know for sure because I haven't read the court transcripts, but there is some evidence evidence that could lead. Yeah, so it's pretty wild. So the book, the, the movie is basically how India gets in and then how India is taken out of it and and Allison and India were roommates. Wow. Yeah. So it was really it was really uh it was really wild. Here's my number one question that I've just okay. been thinking about. Yeah. How did you prepare for this mentally? Because <laughs> I'm sorry, that is that is the darkest mental space that you have to get into to kind of relive it. Yeah. And you know, for you it's it's you're in it you know you right. have to convey all the dimensions and realms that are a part of it so it's like how do you prepare for that when that's not your life you know um i mean i think that for me one of my biggest goals was that i just wanted to make sure to do the story justice right and i have never played a real person who is currently alive before right. and who is has such a high profile so i watched everything i mean i watched hours and hours and hours of footage and i read everything i could and i i mean i read every article that came my way i read anything and everything that allison did at interviews and um, but she kind of played dumb a little bit like uh i kind of knew what i was doing but i kind of didn't because i you know it's funny i actually don't i don't know because i everything that i watched was all stuff of her um previous to it oh wow so like there's an interview that she does with keith um it's I think an hour long so i you know i saw all of that i mean and she also did all these vlogs and had these like really beautiful inspirational things that she would say wow. and she would reach out to her fans and talk back and forth with them through this this vlog that she did and so just watching that and watching her was just like wow she was just this like vibrant 
beautiful person and then to become involved with this like how did that happen i think for me that was like always the question like how did this happen there's a dichotomy with how did it happen right. you know and i think with any cult or with any time people are brainwashed i think that you know there's any number of reasons why it happens and i think it doesn't happen overnight i think that's a thing too that's tough you know because the story is a condensed story and i think that when you read stuff online you're like well, I didn't know about this. How right. did this happen right. so fast? And it's like, it didn't happen fast. I think anybody who gets sucked into a call that takes them a long time. I think also a lot of a lot of people don't really think about this. I think about this because I think it's very prevalent in all industries. Like this, these cults come about and, you know, these some of these people become powerful people in mm -hmm. various industries so that they can give opportunities and manipulate the people within their cults to do the things they need to. Right. And meanwhile, the person is doing it in exchange for an opportunity that they've been searching for. You know right. what I mean? So it's just like, it's so wrong on so many levels, but it's like, I see it happening in so many circles, politics, entertainment, yeah. high, you know, banks, business, you know, things like that, where it's just like, it shouldn't be there, but it's there. It's everywhere. So it's like, how did you kind of, how did you address that naivety and then the kind of like the opposite side of that character where she does do something kind of ruthless and right. starts recruiting, you know, sex slaves and she's in it, you know? I think that... Um, she, she, I think she participated. Oh, in, yes. Yeah, right? Yes, so, everything. That every, I mean, in, in, in the movie, uh, she participates in the ceremony. Wow. Um, but... You know, I think that for me to kind of wrap my head around it all is that, like, I don't think that people are, I mean, I think there's some people who are, like, inherently terrible people. Like, I do think Heath is somebody who, well, I don't even know. I mean, I think that, like, everybody has a sense of good in them. Right. You know? And so I just feel like she was somebody, she, you know, we all in, carry these, like, two, two kind of two sides of the coin. Yeah. Um. And I don't think that they're separate from each other. No, you need dark and light. Yeah. So I think like as far as like preparing and trying to figure out how to marry those two worlds, I think that, you know, if you look at people's motivations when they do bad things, just in general, they usually do it out of like a really like a hardcore driving passionate force. So like love, greed, um, protection of family. And so I think that when you start to see that the reason why people sometimes do bad things is because they're doing it out of caring for other people. That's a lot of times why people do I it. I think it's even more selfish than that. I think it's almost like it's a rush. It's like this, like life, it can be this kind of docile, flat, you know, level. Mm -hmm. Or it can be these huge extremes of highs and lows. And it's like... I see it in music big time. It's like I play big shows and it's tough for me to fall asleep after a big show. Sure. I don't fall asleep. Oh, yeah. And I see like I don't, you know, drink or do drugs or anything like that now. And it's like I see why musicians do because when you're on that high and you can't sleep and you either need to go full throttle or right. you need to just completely go the opposite way. And I see I've, I've seen people go down that route. So it's like, I feel like it's like even more selfish. I don't know if it's selfish, but it's I think like- when you're an artist, I think when you're an artist and you're creating and you're making and, and she is and was an artist and like really passionate about a lot of art and um, literature and you know, all kinds of stuff. And I think that like when you're an artist, I think you really feel things sort of not in a flat line. Like right. I don't, you know, like who I am as a person you know, I feel things, you know, pretty dramatically. Right, <laughs> if that makes right. any sense. No, absolutely. You know, so I think but that then, like... But even the banker who doesn't have those highs and lows mm -hmm. seeks that. You know what I mean? It may not be the emotional, you know, highs and lows, but it seeks the rushes. You right. know what I mean? It's like, that's why you look at Wall Street and like so many people high on cocaine in Wall Street. Right. For the same reason. Because it's like they either have to numb themselves to be able to do the shady things that they're doing or right. it's like go full throttle and it's the rush and you're in, you know what I mean? It's like this mental space yeah. where they're searching for something outside of themselves that can give them. I think know? searching for outside of yourself is a, is a big part of it. Like I think that a lot of times 
just from what I've read about just cults in general, because I did a lot of research on cults and, you know, how people yeah. get in and how people get out. Because I was like, I just need to, I need to understand like what that's coming from. And I think that people who get involved in cults are looking for something. They're looking to better themselves. They're looking for a higher meaning to life. They're looking for, you know, is there a higher power? Like, what does it all mean? And if you find somebody that you trust, that other people trust, because I think that's key too. Right. If other people trust, I think it's easier to buy into it and be like, well, there's all these really, in this case, there's all these really wealthy, intelligent men and women who are buying into this. Like all these people who I respect, all these artists I respect, yeah. all these, you know, high powered people I respect. Like Scientology is the same way. Same yeah. way. I hope you're not a Scientologist. <laughs> no, I am not. <laughs> Otherwise, I just really suck the interview right there. <laughs> but I mean, it's the same thing. It's like, you're around all these creatives and mm -hmm. also people that are like, hey, I can get you into this. You want this? I can make this happen for you. I mean, it's like it's it's a part of the community. It's mm -hmm. a part of. So you're right. It's like you I think you're searching on tidal wave. You know? I think people search. I think we're all searchers inanely. I think, you know, as humans, you get older and you get to a certain point where you're like, whoa, right. We're all going to die. Like, that's just like life. Right. You know, so like. What does it really all mean? But what? Okay, so you're in the scene. You're in this intense scene. Director says, "Cut." How is that decompression? How do you come down from? Ooh, where, that's you a know, good question. You know, from all the crazy yeah. stuff that you're kind of putting yourself through. Yeah, emotionally. I mean, it was a. It was um. Here's what I would say: We shot in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I used to live in Halifax. You did? <gasps> Dude, that's Stop! Crazy. Oh my god! And then Dorian. That is crazy. Dorian. I know. I know. I'm so. It just breaks my heart. I was heart. really, really young. Well, oh so my god! I, I loved Halifax. I only remember a little bit of it. But oh, yeah, I loved crazy. Halifax so Halifax much. Halifax is awesome. So awesome. And so. It's like a small icy town. It is. Well, we were. Th I thank God we were there. Like when it was really beautiful. Yeah. I mean, we had some rain, oh, okay. but you know, we were there in the summer. And we just shot. We just finished like what six weeks ago. So how many days did you shoot total? Uh, the entire shoot was sixteen days. Wow, which is really fast. That is super really fast. really fast. It was four weeks. I was wow. there a little under four weeks. I think I was there under four weeks. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it was pretty wild. And so we shot. And so I think one of the things that sort of helped everybody decompress was one cast was. Awesome. awesome. Everybody was so good. Yeah. Crew. Isn't that the best? It's like when you have that, it's like, wow, it's, it's where it's at. It's like, oh, I'm going to summer camp. Yes. Uh, kind of a dark summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pretend to be sex slaves. Yeah, but it's summer camp nonetheless. <laughs> um, you know, and then the crew was also just like super professional, super talented. Um, the producing staff, the director. I mean, everybody was just good people. And it's rare when you get that many people together that are like right. not dramatic. Right. You know, and there's so many artists in the room. Right. Um, I mean, not to say that there are, um, you know, every set there's like, you know, hiccups and stuff, but like nothing of any magnitude. It was, you know, or at least that I didn't see. I, I loved it. So like that was really, really lovely. And so I think one of the cool things was that at nighttime, like a, all of us would sort of get together after, after set, a group of us, like any number of actors who were there and working, because some people were flying in and out of like Toronto and they would come back for other days. And we would sit at this pub that was in our hotel and we would all download with each other. And we would be like, well, what information did you find? Well, I found this. Did you find this? Have you seen this article? Did you see this video? And so we'd all sort of share and then sort of talk through it and, and, and just kind of ask the big questions and talk about the questions. And that was really, that was so helpful right. because I think all of us were sort of struggling with the same thing was that we're all playing real people right. who are all like humans with emotions that have feelings and are going through. And you have to be compassionate, not just yeah. what the media shows you. You have to see this levels. You have to show levels. Yeah, I mean, that's the, what I great mean, acting these is. These are all people who got sucked into something that, you know, that isn't, that isn't good, right, you know? Right. And I think that like, so as actors, we were all just like, it was really nice for us to all come together and be like, these are, these are people who, yeah. um, whose story we're going to tell. And, we have to do it justice, and so we need as much information as possible. Um, and so we just could, we just like sit and talk and. Um, and have you seen a final cut of this yet, or I haven't. You, you're waiting to see? I've it? Seen a little bit That's from amazing. ADR, yeah. And it was Sony Lifetime, right? Yeah. So it's airing on Lifetime. It's airing on Lifetime. Saturday or. T uh, September twenty first. Yes, whatever September. I think it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. We'll assume it's a Saturday. <laughs> what time? Do we know what time? Eight. PM oh, Sunday. so it's you. You're like the feature movie. 
Yes. Oh, that's a big deal. Yeah. I like those. Have you seen? We have billboards all over town. Oh, that's awesome. Which is so cool. I know. Well, I, I was just about to say, too, it's like most actors in L.A., they do like a one-day shoot. You know, like a one-day show or whatever. Right. So to do a, like two and a half weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, four weeks. Yeah. To do that whole time away yeah. in a location where you, you just, I mean, that is, that's living. That's you're living your craft. You're I living your, I living am your best so, life. dude, like a hundred percent. I mean, I am really, really lucky and blessed, or however you want to like label it, that um, people want to pay me to play dress up. And this particular dressing up was really dark, um, but it was still just an incredible experience to be part of, you know. And just um, and you know, I'm just I just hope we did it justice because it's I know, already know you did. Just just the way you're talking about. Where you shot it, the ensemble, the story. I mean, the story alone is just so edgy and dark and twisted and yeah, weird. Yeah, if you haven't read anything about it, I would suggest telling people to go go read about it. You know, um, get C- Catherine's book. I mean, get Catherine's book. I mean, right. she, you know, she details everything. Um, and I mean, or see the movie and get Catherine's and book. And she was like super against it. And her daughter was just almost like non existent, like brainwashed. Super. And not not really responsive to her mom. Right? She her Catherine was very vocal. I mean, there's all kinds of you can go see all the media um, previous to her daughter getting out. You know where Catherine is just like, like basically like somebody help me. And right. I mean, I'm a mother, so like that for me was when I when I had read her story. I did you know I was like, oh my god, I can't wow. even imagine wow. what she's going through. Again, it's like these are all people who, you know. I, nobody wants bad stuff to happen right, to their kids, of but like, oh my god! Like, I just my heart went out to her as like a mother. I was like, I can't even imagine the heartache. Well, and it's like you raise your kids to be whatever you hope they could be, and mm-hmm. they're gonna be who they're gonna be, right? And when they take a, like a wrong turn, right, and they don't see it, it's like that. I mean, it's amazing that she got her out. Yeah, you know, it's like that's amazing that she went to the depths that she probably did. Um, I think she got the FBI involved. I think yeah, she was the FBI first was person. Oh yeah, to get the FBI involved, and I just remember. I think that the FBI and I could be wrong. It. They knew about it, yeah. and this is one of the things that I think is really wild about cults in general. Just like not just Nexium, but like any cult, is that it is really hard for oh, law yeah. enforcement to get to the center and get people out. Oh yeah, it is really tough, um, because the members are not willing to give up information because that is how they are taught to right. not, you know, to like, you know, it's all supposed to like sort of like self. Well, it's a, everybody you know. protects mm-hmm. everybody. You know what right. I mean? Right. So I, you know, so the fact that this did come out and that, you know, um, people, you know, it kind of has all like it's blown up in the media. I, I, in some ways I hope that like for future situations where there's cults, it'll, this will serve as some sort of like, I don't know. You're like, I, my only hope for the future cults of America. No, <laughs> right. Is that there are no cults of America? I mean, I don't know. I mean, do people start cults with bad intentions? I mean, that's like another yes. big question. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Like you, when you, you know, you see somebody who starts a cult, you're like, do they really mean to start a cult? Like, was that kind of accidental? Kind of. There's something, the people that start them, mm-hmm. there's definitely something, a screw loose. You know, there's yeah, definitely, you probably. know, but, but the followers there, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, there are so many people that are just searching for something. They just want to yeah. be a part of something. And yeah. I think that thing is beautiful, but it's also dangerous when you don't know who's leading you. you know I, think, I, mean? I think about that, like that idea of like just wanting to be part of something. I think that like as an actor in L.A., I think that that's like a huge overarching thing that happens here. People just want to be part of something. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that like that is just a human gut instinct for life. Like people yeah. want to feel like they belong. You want to be a part of a tribe. You'll it's be part, part of a tribe. Of, part of what we do. Yeah. We're cre- we, we're born into creation. Yeah. So we want to be a part of something. You yeah. Know, because that's how we're brought into the world. So, so if like, you don't have something. Yeah. And you you're search. searching. Yes. You go down the wrong. You go down easy. the wrong Reddit hole. Go down, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the wrong Reddit hole. Real quick. Yes. One more time. Yes. Tell everybody what your social media links are. Oh, yes. If anybody wants to hire you for stuff. Oh, yes. Please come hire me. Yes. <laughs> Spell your name out. I play give, dress give, up really well. Yeah, I can. I have feet. <laughs> she has great feet. I haven't even seen her feet, but I hear. They're not as good as they I'm used t- to be, guys. They're the talk of the town. They're not as good as. The old gray mare just ain't what she used to be. <laughs> um, uh, my social media. You can find me on Instagram at Sarah 
S A R A E R as an emergency room Fletcher. Yeah, why is that? Um, it's not emergency room. It's okay. just easy. It's Elizabeth Rebrovic. Oh, whoa. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I see. Rebrovic's a tough one. That's I my... thought you like worked in the emergency room. I was like, <laughs> no. what, what does what? this girl not do? <laughs> <laughs> cook. I do not cook. Don't uh, eat my cooking. I see. Don't do it. Definitely a diva. Don't I like it. <laughs> eat. Don't eat my food. Don't do it. Uh, you can find me. Oh, that's Sarah. That's Instagram. What's my Facebook? Oh, yeah. Same thing. Sarah. No H. E R. Fletcher. And Twitter is just Sarah Fletcher. So. Love it. Yeah, come hunt me down. Don't don't, don't hunt her down. That. That's that not, didn't yeah. come you out. You just invited right. some weirdos right. to right. not do the thing right. that we want them to do. Right. But Sarah Fletcher, Saturday, September twenty first, yes. eight p.m. Yes. You can watch her. Do go to some Lifetime. Twisted, if you go, crazy. Stuff. If you just type in like Nexium Lifetime movie, like it'll pop up. Yeah. So it's um, one more time with the title. Escaping, I believe it's escaping the Nexium cult. Yes. I want to make sure I get yeah, that you're correct. Right. You're right. Because it's, it's escaping the next name, col colon, a mother's, I should. I don't think that's in there. Well, that's not there. what, that's not what I got. There but. were several different titles and her book is titled differently than, but it's escaping the next game cult. Look that up. Wowzers. Well, I'm excited. I'm going to watch this. Thank you. I am too. I, I am a fan of the Thank Lifetime movie. Thank you for movies. having me. You're awesome. Thanks We're going to have you back. Your... Next Great. time you have something else. Even, even if, if it's, it's just a even, fart. Even, even, even if it's just, oh, well, oh. we like those. But for real, you are great people, and I can't wait to see you in this and many more things. Well, so thank you very come much. back and see us. We want you back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and on behalf of myself, Ronen, I know you're in the other room saying, uh, how long is this interview going? Oh, no. We'll see you guys next week. Okay.